Well, we woke up this morning to find, oh, you put it up there. Yes, okay. Get out of here. To find that someone Morning. left us. Ever. Ever. I don't have any oil. Well, we, we're, someone bought us some. So, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so, woke up this morning and someone left us seven quarts of oil. This isn't a good, this is the stuff we used, but they left us seven quarts of oil. We were able to put four quarts in yesterday. You saw that, I think we put that on video. Um, that we had, but that didn't show up on the dipstick. Adding three more quarts did, so we're hoping that having this and having the extra oil will get us to the next town, and then it won't leak all out, and that we can buy more oil, and that will get us to Kalispell. So, hoping that's the case, and hoping that it's just a leak that's easy to fix. And that we can get it fixed and then head south, get the heck out of here. So, yeah, no messing around. wish us luck. That's it, go to Alaska and then to Argentina. And we've been messing around in the United States a little too long. So. Yeah. Well, that was a. Uh, a that not was, fun adventure. That was a fun one. <laughs> so we're, we're safe. Yeah. That's good. We're, the truck's still running. Truck's still running. That's good. Camera's at an angle, so I'm so. going to be at an angle too. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're in, where are we now? Just outside of Kalispell? Yeah, well, well I mean Kalispell technically. That's yeah. where we are. So we were able to make the drive. Woke up this morning. Did you talk about that already? Uh, yeah, I filmed some of it. Prayed for but. a miracle last night, and we woke up, and there were seven quarts of oil sitting outside of our truck, which was amazing. Yeah. So we ended up putting three of Saved them in us. on top of the gallon. Yeah, I didn't have to hitchhike. So the options were reduced to basically me hitchhiking 30 miles into town. So we thought to get oil at Napa and then have to hitchhike all the way back out. And um, that would have been a challenge. So I was up most of the night, like, about to have a panic attack. How do I ask for help doing this? You know, somebody's got to drive this far out and come back. So anyway, that was a lifesaver um, because that was actually the amount of oil we were out. Mm -hmm. right? We well, threw court, three mean, we quarts in. I mean, we put four quarts in last night that then, we had of our own. And then we put three in and the dipstick showed, which was great. Yep. Yeah, so we filled so, it up with seven. So we filled it up and our friend George, who should get more shout outs than we give him, <laughs> Because he's on the on the call even at or on call even at nine o'clock at night on a Sunday, we called him, and he said, "Yeah, you should be good to drive as long as you keep it topped off. Get to a mechanic shop." He said, as "Even as if you don't top it off, it's not going to kill the engine to run it low because Which it'll just quit running." Why we love this truck and this particular engine? It's it's hardy and durable, even though we've had a lot of stuff going on with the truck. So, so we filled it up, and uh, I didn't have to. <laughs> Use my sign. Uh, I left it on the campground. It was pretty interesting. Um, left it on the campground sign, and about seven people drove by or walked by, and not one person stopped. No. Not one person. So, um, you yeah, know. the only person that stopped was yesterday evening. Yep, and, and that, that was our neighbors. And we pretty talked. Pretty sure they're the ones that left the oil. Yeah. So, so they left at like four in the morning, and for them to drop the oil off means they went out, got the oil. And came back before anybody even moved in the campground. Yeah. So they're awesome. We don't know how to get in touch with them to thank them. So maybe this gets to them some, somehow, some way. Um, but we're incredibly um, thankful for that blessing. I mean, it truly was a blessing and won't say a lifesaver because we weren't in danger. But it saved us so much headache and what if and... Yeah. So we were able to use that oil to get 40 miles out of Glacier National Park, get into the town of Browning. Browning. And then Browning, we stopped at Napa, bought more oil, topped off. We lost about a quart in that drive. So we topped off the oil and we drove through um, the mountains where Glacier National Park is, 
drove a little bit through Glacier and we made it into Kalispell, found a campground, yeah. pretty much right in budget, not too far out of budget. And we have an appointment with the mechanic in the morning. Lindsay did great finding that mechanic. So, no more help for right now. We're good. But we have to figure out what we're going to do with the rest of our trip. Yeah. Um, snow's on its way. Rain and snow starting Thursday is rain and by Saturday, Sunday, snow. We kind of want to stick in town to meet with Mark and Karen, who's the couple we connected with that have a ministry in Baja. But that means we're going to have to deal with 20 degree temperatures and man, mm, it's, a, it's, it's a gut check. It's hard, yeah. It's really hard. And we were hoping to meet up with our other friends in Yellowstone and Tetons by this weekend. So that, you know, depending on if they can even go, we don't know yet because we've been dealing with this crisis. So we got to figure all that out. But for the time being, we got as close to Canada as we could get. So we were able to show you that. And we can show you now how to continue moving south toward Baja or Mexican mainland if that's the direction you want to go. Um, we're going to be taking our time for the most part getting down there. We got a couple stops for a little while, a couple weeks here, a couple weeks there. But um, we're really excited that we're safe and that we think we know what's wrong with the truck. And God willing, it's not an expensive fix. Right, mechanic? Yeah. She's the mechanic of the family. She kind of figured it out. I got to crawl. I know crawl under the truck and get covered in mud and grease you can't see it on this blue sweatshirt but Boy, that's what it is. i'm completely covered and all over so my hands but we um so we're here we got to drop the camper and once we drop the camper we're going to be settled in for the day first thing in the morning we'll drive the truck over and drop it off at the mechanic hopefully by the end of the day he's got it figured out and fixed but if not we'll be here for another night maybe another night anyway it's a pretty cute little campground. Yeah, it's really cute. And it's a nice so. place to chill out. I've got work to do. You've got work to do. So we may just be here for a couple nights instead of sitting by the lake. Yeah, flathead lake. But that's how it goes. I'm exhausted. I'm worn out from the stress. And I'm ready to just drop the camper and settle eat down. Some food. Eat some food. And yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that. You ready? Yeah. Dropping the camper is like putting the camper on, but in reverse. So we're going to unhook the battery. Yeah, I mean, it's just a pain because of the second battery. Yep. And then it's just such a tight fit. Yep. So. I was hoping we weren't going to have to take it off again for yeah. like a year and a half. But here we are. So. Good thing we never took off the jacks. We were going to take the jacks off? Oh, but it was, um, we thought about it. Oh, yeah. Remember? People told us on the pan. Oh, yeah, we never take our camper off our truck. Well, good for you. We have to take <laughs> ours off. <laughs> Multiple so, times. If you have a truck camper, it's probably wise to assume that at some point you're going to have to take the camper off the truck. Which is probably the reason why you got a truck camper anyway, is you wanted to have the, the freedom to be able to drop the camper at times. Or like us in Thermopolis, where you need to have a day-to-day -day life with a vehicle. Um... But you probably aren't going to take the jacks off your camper because then you're stuck. driving to go get some food and uh, we passed by this mechanic shop Mikey's diesel mechanic shop and um, we saw these signs Chris saw these signs on the door so we thought it would stop yeah. thought how cool is that so we stopped walk in, talk to the guy, and he's like, oh, I'll look at your truck right now. I'll look at it right now, see what's going on. He notices the issue right away, and he fixed it in 20 minutes. It was an O-ring 
this little tiny o-ring that was in this plug that was broken and he put a new o-ring in and hopefully that fixed it and if that's the case oh my gosh what crazy simple fix seriously amazing um hoping that fixes it and we don't have any other issues because oh my gosh answer prayer So why are you so excited? Because I found a Chick-fil-A and it's been like eight months. You found a what? I found a Chick-fil-A. There's a Chick-fil-A in Montana. <laughs> Score. Awesome. You weren't excited that our truck is fixed? I mean that too. I mean, if we hadn't have tried to go to this Chick-fil-A, we never would have found that mechanic. Yeah. So. That's amazing. Truly is an amazing story. Yeah. Mikey's awesome. I was talking to Mikey and and saying uh, like, so when can you get us in? He goes, right now. I was like, <laughs> I mean like, do we need to come back? We were on our way to dinner and we can come back. He goes, no, I think I can do it right now. <laughs> so he did. So now we're going to Chick-fil-A, super starved, super excited. Here we go. Well, the bad news about getting our truck fixed so quickly is we gotta put the camper back on. <laughs> so, we're gonna go ahead and do that. It's off for no reason. We'll go ahead and put the camper back on. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, don't know how that'll work out. <laughs> 